السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم My brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome I think to the third part of our course Girls are driving me crazy This session inshallah ta'ala will be one of the shortest uh, sessions in this uh, course titled The Land of True Love and that is Jannah insha'Allah ta'ala. Just let me greet you and see your comments before we get started insha'Allah ta'ala. Um, <clears throat> how to do that I don't know yet but insha'Allah we'll figure it out. Yep. Watching from Kuwait already Maryam Jazakillah khairan for coming over. Melissa Hi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. All right, we will be just uh, reminding everyone, even while Ibrahim is in the comments, subhanAllah, who's doing that? <laughs> uh, inshallah ta'ala, we will be reminding you that uh, this course is to be found in the, the previous sessions. If you haven't watched part one, part two, part three, I think we have three videos in this course so far. If you haven't watched them, you can visit our uh, YouTube channel or you can watch them on the same page while Ibrahim. Uh, the YouTube channel is uh, Breaking the Cycle or Break the Cycle, uh, where you can also find the 31 episodes that we have posted during the month of Ramadan about breaking the cycle of pornography addiction and other undesirable sexual uh, activities. Yes, I think something is going slow here, but we'll figure it out. Ambreen Abbasi, Assalamu Alaikum and uh, Salam to all the brothers and sisters uh, from Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, looking forward to see you soon, inshallah ta'ala. All right, let's get started. Today I want to start with four stories that all related or all uh, linked to Jannah, paradise. And that is the, uh, which I call it according to today's session, the uh, only place that you can see or you can taste or you can find really true love, genuine love. Uh, the land of true love and that is Jannah. The first story is the lady who came to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. She was suffering from epilepsy and she used to move when, when she uh, you know, experienced that seizure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. She would move in a way that her, her clothes will be uncovered and her, parts of her body will be exposed. So she came to the Prophet Wasallam, telling him uh, Pray for me, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can cure me. Cure me. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her, you could either be patient, you can either be patient uh, with your sickness and in return Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit you to Jannah. Or if you wish, I could also pray for you. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave her a choice. You want me to pray for you, Allah will cure you, easy. Uh, but you want to be patient, you know, for, for these years that you will remain alive in this dunya, Allah will give you in return, in exchange of this sickness, Jannah, Allahu Akbar. What was the choice of this lady? Jannah was the choice, of course. Who would replace Jannah with something else, with something very low? So she said, Jannah, I, I would be patient. But then she asked the Prophet Sallallahu at least, Ya Rasulullah, pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that when I suffer from that seizure, uh, my body will not be exposed. So the Prophet ﷺ pray for that. Look at the lady. She was very concerned that, you know, she, she wanted to protect one of the, you know, the precious uh, thing in, in the, that lady owned and that is her body. Uh, Subhanallah Azim. But look, the lady did not request for cure because she knew that this dunya is very, just temporary. At the end, she will experience Jannah, the land of true peace and love. The other story is the story of the first martyrs in Islam, Ala Yasir, the family of Yasir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. When the Prophet ﷺ in the beginning of his mission was spreading Islam and talking to the people in Mecca, those were the first, among the first people who embraced Islam, the family of Yasir. And subhanAllah al -Azim, as a result of the execution and the torture, in Mecca back then for anyone or towards anyone who declared that God is one and Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah, they were killed, they were executed. And the Prophet وسلم, 
looked at their bodies and he was grieved and he was sad. He told them what? Sabran ala yasir inna maw'idakum al-jannah. Be patient, O family of Yasser, for indeed our appointment date or our time will be in Jannah. Sabran, be patient, O uh, uh, family of Yasser. Remember my brother and sister, he was talking to dead people. He was telling them, be patient. Subhanallah al -Azim. How about us, the living? How much more patience should we endure when we, you know, face some challenges and some difficulties? Their challenge was actually execution, death. Yet the Prophet ﷺ was reminding them that don't worry, Jannah is our final abode, insha'Allah ta'ala. The third uh, story related to Jannah is the, uh, the people of Medina, when they first met the Prophet ﷺ, and they were having a deal that we will protect you. But what will you give us in return? Because they knew that once they declare their protection or allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ, they are actually indirectly waging war against the people in Quraysh, the people who are actually trying to hunt the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. They wanted to execute him. They wanted to, to end the message of Islam. So they wanted to know what will they get in return. The Prophet ﷺ looked at them and he said one word and that was what? Jannah. And they accepted the offer. One word. Jannah, because Jannah for them was reality, was something tangible. They, they can see it, they can sense it, they can feel it, they can smell it. Do you remember that companion who actually in the battlefield, my brothers and sisters, I want you to visualize this, in the battlefield, he said what? Wallahi, I could smell Jannah behind that mountain. And subhanallah al -Azim, once the battle was over, they found him dead behind that mountain, which he pointed at. Another companion, came to the Prophet ﷺ and he was new Muslim. He didn't pray much, he didn't do zakah, he didn't go to hajj. He was a new Muslim. He, the Prophet ﷺ was distributing the, uh, the, the, the spoil of wars and he gave him, uh, you know, part of that, you know, ghanaim or the spoils of war. And he came to the Prophet ﷺ a bit disturbed, a bit, a bit angry. He said, Wallahi, I did not embrace Islam for these things that you gave me. I embraced Islam so that I could fight for the sake of Allah and I get an arrow right here and he pointed as his throat and I die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, if you are truthful, if you are really truthful and sincere about your request, Allah will give you what you asked for. And guess what? After the battle was over, the companions carried him to the Prophet sallallahu with an, with an arrow in his throat. And the Prophet sallallahu was so shocked and surprised. He said, ahu ahu, is that the same man who was talking to me a while ago? He said, yes. He's the same man. The Prophet ﷺ said, Sadaqallahu fa sadaqa. He was very sincere and truthful to Allah. And as a result, Allah gave him what he wanted. If you wanted to recover from any addiction, Wallahi, the strongest of all addictions, if you are sincere and truthful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you out of your difficulty. Just take a step forward toward that change. But look at the beauty of the companions and their sincere faith in that thing that they have never seen ever. Jannah. For them, they could sell out anything, including their own lives, like the family of Yasser, in exchange of what? Jannah. Allahu Akbar. The fourth story I have here is the, the companion who came to the Prophet ﷺ. And again, I'm so passionate about this because, you know, subhanAllah, if I had the chance to sit with the Prophet ﷺ to request something from him, I will have a long list to ask the Prophet ﷺ of. But look at this, subhanAllah, this companion came to the Prophet and he told him, the Prophet ﷺ told him, sell me, ask, Allahu Akbar. This is the Prophet, yani the Prophet was sitting with the companion and all of a sudden the Prophet ﷺ looked at the man and he told him, sell me, ask me, ask me anything. The man asked him, I ask you to be your companion in Jannah. I want to be just right next to you in Jannah. Subhanallah al the Prophet ﷺ seems like he loves that man so much. He told him, is there anything else? <laughs> anything else you need? He said, no, no, that's it, that's it. What else would you want other than Jannah, other than the companionship of the Prophet Muhammad As you can see, the lady preferred, you know, her sickness over, you know, uh, in, in, she, she preferred to be sick in this dunya in exchange of Jannah. Another people died, all of them, the family members died in exchange of Jannah. 
This man, subhanAllah al-Azim, he, the Prophet ﷺ told him, ask me anything, he said, only Jannah. The people of Medina, you know, they sacrificed their lives for the sake of Muhammad Sallallahu and his message in exchange of Jannah. How about you, my brothers and sisters in Islam? Will you not sacrifice your desire for the sake of Jannah? Will you not sacrifice this haram activities for the, say, in the, for the sake of Jannah? Will you not leave these secretive sins and secretive activities and boyfriends and girlfriends and chatting with the opposite gender unnecessarily for the sake of Jannah? If you really sincerely believe that this is something, you know, uh, true, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He mentioned Jannah in the Qur'an, was speaking the truth, and that when Muhammad sallallahu promised us Jannah, He was promising us the truth, then you'll have to do something, inshallah. I want to see your comments because I can see, mashallah, it's pouring with comments, and then we'll continue, inshallah ta'ala. Let me, bismillah, where are the people? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. We have uh, Janice from uh, Manila. We have <coughs> Sheikh Fahim. I don't know from where, but how are you, brother? Welcome to uh, the uh, broadcast. We have Hamid. No matter what life throws at you, remain kind and compassionate. Ameen to that, inshaAllah. Uh, Ujus, be thankful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us thankful because the promise of shaitan is that he will deviate us. He will cause us to deviate. And he told... And he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the, the, the narration in the Quran that that you will not find the majority of your slaves are thankful. So our duty as, as Muslims is to show gratefulness by means of what? By means of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Mere or mired love for the Allah is important, absolutely. Love for the sake of Allah is very, very important. And actually, this is what we wanted to discuss briefly. The love that we should have in this dunya, even for your wife, even for your husband, should be a love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know of couples who actually got married with one intention. And they didn't have emotions for each other. They were introduced by parents and uh, people in the community. And subhanAllah, when they meet for the first time, they said what? Let's get married for one reason, so that we can actually establish a righteous Muslim families to aid one another to be in Jannah. That was their intention. So how about the love? I love you, I love you too, I love you three, and the romance and the songs and the, you know, the pinky stuff. All these things came later on. All these things came along. And I'm not suggesting that all marriages work this way. If you have seen someone that, you know, your heart pump and you, you know, you felt emotions and some stuff like that, no problem. You can approach, you know, the person in the right way with supervision of others until he or she are your halal. Then you could enjoy whatever you wanted to enjoy. But so long as you're not married, my brothers and sisters, keep the boundaries. Keep the boundaries. And this is, you know, safe for everyone. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Let's be patient. Allahu Akbar. That's the word that I want to hear from the Muslim community every time. Allah, no exaggeration. Even today in my classes, the word patient, is, as soon as you, you see, you say patient, people, ah, uh, mm, nah, this is, you know, ah, yeah. <laughs> Allah, my brothers and sisters, you know, I've been talking about patience for so long and, and, and I wanted to, to speak about my khutbah tomorrow about patience, but I'm afraid because I'm worried that the people say, enough patience, man, we've been patient for so long. Once you say that, once you say this statement, I've been patient for so many years, know well, know for sure, for certain, that you've never been patient. Because patience, by definition, is that when things become so tough, when you reach up to that you know, level of, you can't bear it anymore, that's where you should wait a little bit more than usual. Allahu Akbar, that's patience. That's patience. And this is the key for Jannah. One of the keys to Jannah is sabr, patience. So it's, you know, today is all about the land of love, Jannah. And in order to achieve that, love each other for the sake of Allah. Love your wife, love your future wife, even if you don't know her yet. Love her for the sake of Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can enrich your life with love. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us, and we mentioned this hadith in another session, that once Allah loves you, He called the entire angels, entire creation to love you. And once that happened, you're a winner. Allahu Akbar. Imagine if the entire creation loved you. Man. So 
Will you exchange that for something low? أَتَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Will you replace that which is very low by that which is very, very good and better? Will you, will you replace Jannah with something low? Something will, will be vanished, will, will, will die out. Be clever. Do business like those people, who, they have done the best deal with the Prophet That's the deal that will never go to waste. Jannah. Oh yeah, I'm sick, I will remain sick the rest of my life, but at the end I need Jannah, that's what I want. Yeah, the Prophet could have said, Ya Allah, cure the lady, finished. And once she see herself, you know, uh, fit and beautiful, and so you don't know what could happen. SubhanAllah, shaitan could come and destroy the entire path of that lady. SubhanAllah al -Azim. So she was very smart to say, you know what, I will remain patient in exchange of Jannah. Will you sacrifice that desire tonight, my brothers and sisters? Will you put filters on your computer to protect yourself and your family members from any inappropriate website that could invade you and invade your brain and inv invade your iman? Will you do that tonight? That's the challenge. Sacrifice anything tonight, my brothers and sisters, for the sake of Jannah. Let me read more comments, inshallah ta'ala. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Dua for all PWD children. What's that, brother? Janice, I, I didn't get that. To be honest, I don't know what, what do you mean by PWD. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect all our children, the whole all children in the world. I mean, uh, bravo, Yen Ancho, bravo to you that you are here, alhamdulillah. Wish you luck. I mean, wish all the, the Muslims blessings, not luck. Yani we, don't <laughs> we don't want luck. We want the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't imagine what kind of patient they had. Ya Allah, help us to have beautiful patient. I mean, sabrun jameel, Allahu Akbar. Inspiring, very good. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. I mean, at least uh, it is a test from Allah. Love is one of the tests. Absolutely, I agree. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Great. A participation my brothers and sisters thank you brother i am listening currently at hospital i love my mother she is in icu heaven lies on mashallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase yani, uh, your your level of obedience to your parents and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure your mom and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani inshallah next next week we may hear that she's out of the hospital and doing well i mean pwd persons with disabilities oh persons with disabilities subhanallah uh, uh, yani may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save all our children and I would never call anyone disabled. I call them able differently and this is the term that I love the most and I learned it from someone with ability in a different way. Yani I heard it from someone who's in a wheelchair, subhanAllah. He said, I'm not disabled, I'm able in a different way, in a unique way. So they are not disabled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them in this fashion for a reason, for test for them, for us. May Allah grant everyone, insha'Allah ta'ala, a cure. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replace this with Jannah at the end. Ameen. Watching from Philippines. Philippines, watch out. We're coming soon, insha'Allah ta'ala. Uh, a lot of people from Philippines, mashallah, tabarakallah, Abdul, Abdul Wasi or Abdul Wasi. Uh, praying for all of you, insha'Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Ameen, ya Rab. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe the role, mashallah, tabarakallah. So as, as you can see, my brothers, yeah, mashallah, the comments are uh, Pakistan, Philippines. Mm, mashallah, tabarakallah, when I feel that I don't have patient. Jazakumullah. May Allah bless you. Beautiful, beautiful, Allah insights and comments. And if you have some questions now, you start posting your questions, inshallah. But... This is what I wanted to talk about today. Yani the description of Jannah. In, I'm, I'm not going to describe Jannah to you. Briefly, just briefly. What has been prepared for those who will, inshallah ta'ala, protect themselves from falling into these haram activities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about Jannah enough. The Prophet sallam, his description alone, wallahi, one of the things that yani, shook me to the core 
is the description of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فيها ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر والله when I write these down I wrote this hadith down a couple of times in Jannah there are that which no eyes have ever seen and no ears have ever heard look at the description and never cross human imagination okay the senses, you know, the, the, the eyes, we can see a lot of beautiful things and we, you know, we feel amazed at looking at beautiful greenery stuff and the sky, the beauty, the beauty of the beaches and the oceans and the, the I, like, I love snorkeling. I look down and, and it, once I get into the, the deep water and I look at the fish and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I get like, you know, blockage from the entire world. I just focus on what I'm seeing underneath the ocean. Beautiful. All this, you know, when we hear that there will be oceans in Jannah or rivers, rivers of milk and rivers of honey and rivers of this and that. And we look at it, how will they look like? You don't know because the Prophet ﷺ said, nothing is comparable to what's in Jannah. Nothing. Even the, the sound that you are hearing now. Even your own voice. Even the language. Things will be entirely different. Things that never cross human imagination. Allah, Wallahi, when I hear this. Yani, and there's another narration where Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah said, A'adattu li ibadi. Allah said, I have prepared for my slaves. Yani, Jannah is prepared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, designed and made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi ma la ra'at, what no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard, and never cross human imagination. Will you replace that with filth? Will you replace that with haram, with secretive acts, will, with disobedience of, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, I know that we will fall. We will commit mistakes. We will do wrong. That's, that's un understandable. The Prophet said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta. All the children of Adam are sinners. By nature, we will fall. Wa khayrul khatta'in tabun. The, the second Ha, you know, the second part of this hadith is the most important. And the best of all sinners are those who often repent. Immediately go back, go back. Call, call out to scholars, imams, you know, uh, parents, your brothers, your sisters in the community to help you out if you have this sort of addiction. You know, when I look at Surah Al-Ghashiyah, one, uh, one of the chapters that I decided to read during Salatul Eid last, you know, last Eid, and I made mistake in it. And I was so bad, you know, I was so sad because I love imagining Jannah through this surah. So when I made a mistake, and I was like, oh my God, this surah, like I repeated a lot. And I made a mistake. I was so sad. But the part that I love the most in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing, Fiha Ainun Jariya. In Jannah, there is that flowing spring. And when I, when, I, when I reflect over this ayah alone, I imagine like, you know, a beautiful beach. Because I love beaches. And every time we plan, me and my wife, me and my family, planning to go for an outing or a vacation, beaches are always on the list. Where? That's the, the, the thing. But when we go there, we enjoy looking at the ocean. We enjoy looking at the birds coming at the, at the seashore to, you know, to, to hunt for small fishes. You know, it's beautiful to observe after Fajr. You just sit, relax. Look at the beach, of course, drink coffee, which brother didn't offer me today. <laughs> no joking, bro. Uh -huh. So, but the ocean is beautiful. And you look at the Quran telling you that Fiha Ainun Jariya, there are beaches there. There are water flowing. But how do they look like? Do they look like today's beaches? Absolutely not. Beautiful. And then Fiha Sururun Marfu'a. In Jannah, there are that these thrones that are you know, leveled up high, raised up high. It, it reminds me of the romantic, you know, uh, see, see, sitting arrangement, you know, when you sit in, 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 in a romantic manner. I was in Maldives, me and my family one day, and uh, they invited us for dinner. And when we entered, the, you know, they told us the dinner is on the beach. So we thought there would be a table on the beach and so on. But we went there, actually it was designed in the sand. The dining table was actually the sand. The seatings were the sands. They, they, they dig it in a way to make like, you know, seating arrangement and the table itself was the sand. It was so beautiful. What will happen if we want something similar to this in Jannah? Allahu Akbar. Allah will design it for you in a way that you could never imagine. Just, just sacrifice your desires. You get uh, Jannah. And drinking cups, you know, placed for you. 
they will fly up to your mouth to drink something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's preparation for you. Allahu Akbar. And many people, they, uh, you know, today uh, some of the students, they say, brother, you know, whenever we watch a movie, and this is the problem with watching movie, Allah. Whenever we watch a movie, we see a guy coming with, uh, this is alhamdulillah water, yani, because I don't want people to say, oh, astaghfirullah, brother, is acting as if he's drinking alcohol. But they, they see people coming with, with glasses of wine and beer and whiskey and all these haram drinks. And then they say that, um, that when we see them drinking in the movies, after the movie, we feel like you, we wanted to have an experience of this, you know, because it's cool. They say they, they hold it in a certain way, you know, they cheer and they, you know, all these things, it's haram in Islam. So, but it excites us in a way that we wanted to experience the same thing. Is that haram? Is that haram? You know, there is a scholar who said that uh, f uh, uh, that your happiness with the haram is even severer than the haram itself, than the act itself. Farahuka bidhambi ashadda min dhamb. Like when you do the sin, even when you do the sin, if you were happy doing the sin, your happiness is even severer than the sin itself. There are people who commit the sin and they feel guilty. There are other people who commit the sin and they boast about it. They are happy about it. They are happy. Wallahi, there was a girl. Uh, yani, just a while ago, we were talking. And while we were talking, we were talking about the Prophet ﷺ. And I was mentioning something amazing about the Prophet. You know what, she, what did she say? She said, oh, this guy was amazing. So I looked at her. I said, and she's a Muslim. I say, are, are you referring to the Prophet ﷺ? Yes, is he, isn't he a guy? And she started to argue with me about, you know, that he's a guy, he's a man. He's, isn't he a guy? What, what's wrong with that? SubhanAllah, even the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu will call him what? Oh, messenger of Allah. <laughs> His wife, she would not call him honey, uh, you know. And I'm not saying that you, you don't call your husband this, but look at the level of respect to the man who was chosen by Allah. Not by, uh, you know, voting, by Allah Himself to, to lead this ummah. Someone who's just born yesterday will call him a guy. W what a, a shame, what a shame. So subhanAllah, we have to be very careful of these things. So, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. I was, when, I, when I remember this, I was, I was really uh, distressed. So, Jannah, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the whole thing today is about uh, inshallah, making a decision. Allah is asking in the Quran certain groups of people who have, uh, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them blessings and yet they asked for something else. Allah gave them something they didn't like it. Their desires did not like it. Their wants and whims didn't like it. So they asked for more. So Allah asked them. Do you want to replace that which is really very low with that which I'm giving you and it is better for you? Don't you know that this is better for you? So the brothers who were asking about the wine and we feel like, you know, brother, wallahi, wallahi, patience is the key. Patience is the key for this ummah. And this, I think, I think this is the first time I'm saying that. Sabr is the only solution for this ummah. If we don't develop patience, if we don't know what is patience, then we will never get out of our problems. We will never get rid of our addiction to all sorts of things. I was reading a book uh, a day ago. It's called, uh, ah, Ya Allah, Teens and Their Screens, or something like that. And the, even the title you know, caught my attention. And I started reading the book. The author is arguing that, subhanAllah, if the teens don't develop patience, waiting for, for you know, uh, waiting for their demand to, to hold their screens and to, 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 to view these things, they will never be able to control their desires in the future on anything else. Anything else. You will be wanting, 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 because you can't even leave your phone for five minutes. You feel like you know you 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 have some some diarrhea or something. You, you can't you can't wait. You can't hold yourself from leaving the phone. So Subhanallah. Even the Westerners, even non-Muslims, they are asking you to be patient. But Allah told us that long long time. Inna Allah. The most one of the most popular verses in the Quran. Inna Allah ma sabirin. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with those who are patient. And whosoever Allah decides to be with, no one will go against. No one, nothing will go against you. If, if Allah is with you, who can go against you? SubhanAllah, what could destroy you if Allah is with you? So patience is the key. Uh, SubhanAllah al -Azim. Willingness to be taught what we do not know is the true pledge of growth, both in knowledge and wisdom. Zaid Zubair, I have just joined. Welcome, but we are about to wrap up. Inshallah, if you don't have questions, we will wrap up soon. Um, uh, but inshallah, you can always go back to uh, the recording. Inshallah, let me drink one. I was going to say wine. Subhanallah. <laughs> Bismillah. Inshallah, may Allah quench our thirst in Jannah with all the drinks that He had prepared for us. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But I want you, my brothers and sisters, to have, yani, I don't know how to come up with a, uh, uh, a hashtag for this session, uh, but, but the, the motto of this session, uh, this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, would you replace that which is very, very low with that which is better that I have prepared for you? So if, if anyone genius can come up with a hashtag, short hashtag that can actually uh, give us that meaning, uh, then you, we can, inshallah, share this message and say, share this video. So this is one of the things that I wanted to mention, inshallah. Kindly, whoever is listening to us, whoever thinks that this session was beneficial, you think that other people will benefit, inshallah ta'ala, let's say, bismillah, renew your intention and share it on your profile. And inshallah, yeah, and perhaps that, that, sharing, that share action in, in itself will be a, a stair for you towards Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. Life has become a prison due to all sorts of restrictions. There's a question before, before that as well. What about those who are patient, don't sin, but their life has become a prison? Uh, your question is a bit uh, vague, sister. What, what do you mean their life become like prison? What, what does that mean? If you, if you have something like, you know, personal, you can, inshallah, send me a private message with clarification of the question, then I will give you the answer. But I don't know what do you mean but by people whose life become like prison. I, I don't really know what you mean. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Restrictions from husbands, restrictions from family. Don't do that, don't do this. Yani, let us be more clear, inshallah, if it's a personal matter, you can uh, always contact me. And the promises I always give back to people who contact me, alhamdulillah. Um, Jazakumullah khairan, my brothers and sisters. Uh, yani, I will give it a minute or two. If you don't have any questions, we will end the session here. Next week, inshallah, on Thursday, same time, we will have the last session of this course. And these were the, I think, six advice. Let me just, uh, yes, six advice given by one of my mashayikh, one of my uh, teachers regarding this matter of desires, love, and uh, Restrictions on desires, a lot of restrictions on desires. Actually, there is no restrictions on desires. There are, there, are, there are guidelines on how to use these desires in a lawful manner. It's like, as, a, as we said earlier, in Ramadan, you are, you are commanded to control your desire of hunger. You are commanded. The, hara, the, halal, the halal water becomes haram in the day of Ramadan. An apple, an innocent orange becomes haram in the day of Ramadan. You can't eat it. You are requi your requirement is to hold your desires for a period of time. That's it. So Ramadan was given to us as a training camp so that we can control bigger desires later on. Even in Ramadan, your halal wife becomes haram on you, upon you, and your halal husband becomes haram for you during the day of Ramadan. That's, that's just a training for later on so that the entire year can be balanced. You could control now, if you controlled yourself from the halal, if you controlled yourself from the very halal, your own halal, you, you, you restricted yourself, then how much easy, easier the process of controlling yourself from the haram people, lowering your gaze from those who are not lawful to you to look at, lowering, you know, abstaining from that, you know, the consumption of haram drinks, haram smoke, and so on. So... All the desires Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us with a direction. 
your sexual desire is only for your spouse. That's, that's the direction. There is no restriction here. I don't see that as a restriction. In fact, we comply with all worldly restriction, uh, restrictions without a question. Without a question. You go to the doctor, you have some pain here, have some issues here. The doctor writes for you a prescription telling you to eat this, uh, take these tablets three times a day, each time two tablets, every four hours, every six hours. Then you go home, what do you do? You actually, you make an alarm to remind you of the next tablet. You follow the doctor's, you know, instructions without a doubt, without a question. Why? Because you trust him. How about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't you trust Allah? Don't you believe that he is the, 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 the creator of all and he knows better? Subhanallah. We go on an airplane, the, they tell you fasten your seatbelt, they tell you, you know, open the shade, open that window and we don't know why why they always tell us put the window up put the window down now i know why but i mean earlier we just follow without even a question because we believe we have developed that trust that these are the leaders if we don't follow them we might end up in trouble true or false my brothers and sisters in islam we follow all these restrictions without a question without a, any argument yet when it comes to allah we question him subhanallah how about the singles? Is it okay to talk online? You see, it? the singles, the Prophet ﷺ told us, Oh, ya ma'ashar al-shabab, oh young people, single people, whosoever amongst you is able to get married, get married quickly. Push your parents. Yes, go to your parents and t talk to them. Don't do haram behind the back and then say, oh, they, don't, they will not allow us. We don't know if they will allow us. Go and tell them to honestly now. It's the time to speak honestly to our parents. Tell them, you know what, if, if you don't facilitate the halal for me, haram is going to be easy. And this is not a justification for you to go to do the haram, yani. don't be smart. Oh, I talked to them, brother, now I'm going online. Yani be smart, be smart and be wise and be sincere. Do it with sincerity. Allah will test you anyway and things will be difficult anyway. Whether you're married or single, things will be difficult. So talk to them, open up, uh, talk to the, you know, the people around the community, work hard. Work hard. Involve yourself in too many things to be busy so that you don't think in the haram until you are stable on your feet, inshallah, and you can provide for your wife or you can, you know, you, you learn about the responsibilities, the roles, the rights that we talked about, I think, in the first session. When, you, when you're ready, alhamdulillah, go, do, do the halal. And be careful, my brother, if you are a brother, after the marriage, the challenges are there. You will be looking at... Uh, you know, the girls outside and we say, brother, what do we do? There are many girls outside, the billboards, the movies that I watch. You see, the challenges will not be over once you get married. Be careful. The challenges, that the, the, the desires will be there. Once you are with your wife, after three months, four months, six months, you got used to each other. You will feel like, khalas, you're bored now. You want something else. Well, billah. So the challenges, your wife, you married her in a, in a particular shape. After a while, she gained weight, she, you know, she became pregnant, she, her look changed, you will also change. If you are getting married just for this, then inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Then everything will be, you know, uh, in the wrong direction. So be careful. Um, So uh, the, the bottom line, Sister Maryam, if you, uh, going online is absolutely halal if you don't talk to the opposite gender. Yeah? <laughs> when I'm watching bad things and that time Islamic commands are also in my mind, but I take them aside and do the sin. Yani may Allah forgive us all. And I don't want you to, um, to refer to yourself as a sinful person. Uh, or that you did this, yani let's, let, let's talk in a general terms. Uh, but yes, there are people who reach to that point, you know, and, and you know, they think of Allah's commands. Sometimes uh, people will email me, they say, we will be hearing even Fajr Adhan, and we are on the internet watching pornography, or Billah. And they will ignore the Adhan and they will continue watching. Because I, those, those who have reached to that level, they are badly addicted and badly infected, their heart is, is now rusted. You know, they need to polish that heart. And I have a whole course, hopefully, inshallah, we can bring it online one day. It's called Restart Your Heart, 
where we are dealing with this, how can we you know, restart our hearts so that we can, inshallah, maintain our level of steadfastness uh, fastness on the straight path. <clears throat> Salam, brother. Whoever persists in being patient, God will make him patient. Allahu Akbar. Man yatasabbar yusabbiru Allah. Yani this is a brother uh, reminding me of uh, a hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever pretend to be patient, Allah will give him patience. Subhanallah. What does it mean pretend? Not to act out, but to do your best to be patient. Even if you can't stand the situation. Persist. Do your best to be patient. You know, complain to somebody whom you trust. Talk to someone. Don't, don't keep these things, you know, for yourself. Otherwise, you will explode on your own. That's why the concept of jama'ah, of being together, is amazing. You know, even Jannah that we talked about today, uh, one ayah said, Zumura, uh, yani may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to enter Jannah in groups. Even entering Jannah will be in groups, provided that you have spent time with your brothers and sisters together. On the, upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. You will enter Jannah together, inshaAllah. So the concept of jama'ah is very important. It protects us from falling into the haram things. How about the reverts? Where we can ask help to get married. Ask, ask me, sister, inshaAllah. <laughs> ask me, we will direct you to beautiful sisters. I don't know if you're in Philippines or in Hong Kong or in Malaysia. Or We will direct you to the right channels, right sisters. Don't go to a brother to tell him that we need to get married. This is the danger that we that when when the opposite gender genders talk to each other loosely, things end up not so good. Uh, we talked about Ahmed and Muna example last I think last episode, and we we said we said that some religious people fall into this error because of that loose relationship or loose contacts without you know boundaries. So be careful. You wanna you wanna get married. You are a revert. You don't know where to go. Ask, you know, the mashayikh around, ask the imams around, ask your circle, and they will direct you to the right person, to a sister to handle your case. Not like the brother who saw a, a girl taking shahada, he cried, and he told her, I will teach you salah. And he started teaching her salah, and they ended up doing zina. They ended up doing, committing adultery, so be careful. Shaitan doesn't know whether you're religious or not. He can fool anybody. He can fool any person, religious or not. So be careful. Movies. We, yeah, I was talking about the movies. Yeah, Jazakallah Khan for reminding me. I was talking about the effect of movies. You see, the brother saw somebody drinking wine in the movie. He wanted to drink wine. Immediately, it acts on your brain like drugs. Whatever you see, Sheikh Ahmad Didad, may Allah have mercy on him. He said, he said that whatever you read, if you're reading junky stuff, your mind will become junky. And if you see junky stuff, your brain also will become junky. You will, you will tend to act out what you see. That's why most of the problems now from couples, I counsel a lot, a lot of couples. I was just talking to the brothers earlier. People calling me almost daily about problems between husbands and wives. And one of the common problems now is that the wives are observing a dramatic changes in intimacy from their husbands. The beating, the slapping, the pulling of the hair. And they say, we don't know, he wasn't like that before. I immediately I ask, ask him, is he watching pornography? This, this is what they learn from. The, what they see, what they see, it, it registered, and then they start acting what they have seen. And they think because the actors and the actresses in these movies, they are just acting. They are in pain, in terrible pain. I, uh, I read a book by an ex-porn star, her name is Shelley Loban, who wrote a book called The Fantasy of Porn. And she's saying that actually we don't enjoy what, what we're doing. It's just for money. It's just acting. In fact, we take tablets, we take, not tablets, drugs, painkillers, because they are in pain all the time. They don't enjoy, they just act. The mourning and the sounds and all this, people think that they are enjoying. And as a result, the man thinks that this is the way. This is how to please your wife. And then they go home, they start beating their wives. You know, it's, it's, we need to talk about it openly. Enough is enough. Wallahi, enough is enough. Thousands of people are suffering in silence because leaders in the community are reluctant to talk about the issue. So, uh, yani, I'm passionate about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all strength. But uh, 
movies, movies, even the regular movies, the TV series, يعني either you be selective, I, I'm guilty as well. I sometimes, you know, because of my children, I will sit with them and watch cartoon. And in the cartoon movie, you will see a kiss. You will see a hug. You will see that message that always promote nudity, always promote haram love, always promote sexual activities, even in, that mo- in these cartoon movies. So we have to be very vigilant. Very, very, you will die and you will leave a legacy behind. That legacy could be a legacy that would take your children and yourself to Jannah or it can be an, a pi- piling up bad deeds while you are in, gra- in your grave because you didn't teach your family members the proper way to live. Indeed, it is very scary. Satan can fool anybody. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Uh, as I mentioned, this is one of the shortest sessions that uh, will be delivered in, uh, in this course. Uh, remember, my brothers and sisters in Islam, Asya bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun, uh, she also asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a house in Jannah in exchange of uh, the tyranny of Fir'aun and his oppression. So Jannah is the key. Jannah is the goal. We want Jannah. Whatever happens here is temporary. You will die and everyone else will die. And what remains is your good deeds that you have performed or your bad deeds that you have performed. Don't ruin your dunya and your Jannah in this life. Yani a person could ruin this dunya and the next because of these 60, 70 years that he will live on earth. But you could actually sacrifice whatever is in the, in the dunya in exchange of forever, in exchange of eternity in peace and bliss. Ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. I will stop here, my brothers and sisters. Please, again, send me your questions related to these issues, uh, even private messages, inshallah. I will filter them. And perhaps, yani, one day we will come only to answer your questions, inshallah. But for now, next week, Inshallah, I have six advice from one of my mashayikh, one of my teachers uh, in, in regards to this, Inshallah. And that will be the last session of the course. Girls are driving me crazy. Please pray for me, pray for my family members, and pray for the brother behind the camera and his wife who's pregnant. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless her and uh, grant her, you know, safe delivery. Ameen. Uh, how to be mustaqim. We will, Inshallah, answer the questions on a later date. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. فيديوز لايك ذا بيج لايك ذا بريك ذا سايكل أند شير إت ذا يوتيوب شانل. مي الله سبحانه وتعالى ريوارد يو أول فور يور جود ديدز. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.